Good morning. Well, almost afternoon. It's still morning. Welcome to the Hope and Healing Center. How many of you have been here before? Some of you. Okay. Well, then I ha I'll give you my little short spiel on the Hope and Healing Center. We were, we're an outreach of St. Martin's Episcopal Church, and our primary focus is mental health. Uh, we have seminars like this one. We have uh, classes we do for professionals, continuing education. We provide mental health coaching, and we also have three research fellows, of which I am one. My name is Peggy Datermeyer. I'm the Aging and Bioethics Fellow. And so my task is a combination of community outreach and research associated with aging and ethics issues. So this is the first of a four-month series, monthly series, on aging well. So today, uh, Tracy and her group from Amazing Place are going to talk about cultivating the arts. And in January, I will be doing a presentation on Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, if you've been paying any attention to the news, you know that it's a hot topic right now. And I found that an awful lot of people don't know the difference between those two programs and the effect it has on us. Then in February, we have a presentation by Dr. Julie Kutak of the Alzheimer's Association on progress in Alzheimer's treatments. And then in March, uh, my former boss at the Memorial Hermann System uh, Chaplaincy Program is going to talk about the unwanted gift of grief. So we have some really wonderful programs, and I hope you'll be able to join us for some of those. Um, in April, I will also be doing a program in conjunction with some other folks. Not sure yet if we're going to do it at the church again or if we're going to do it here, but it's on aging with grace and covers the health care, financial, legal, and living issues affiliated with aging. So keep an eye out for all that information is on our website. Today, it's my greatest joy to introduce to you Tracy Brown, who's the executive director at Amazing Place. I don't know how many of you have had an opportunity to visit their facility, but it's spectacular. I heard about Amazing Place years ago when um, I was still doing my seminary work, and a friend had a parent who was at Amazing Place and, and um, just raved about the program when you were still at St. Luke's. Now they have this beautiful facility off of Richmond, and I'll let her tell you how wonderful it is. <laughs> and so please join me in welcoming Miss Tracy Brown. Thank you so much, Peggy. I've got a mic. We are so delighted to be here today, and Peggy, thank you so much for this wonderful invitation. I think we're all concerned about aging well, and so it's great to be a part of this. Amazing Place is a faith-based organization. We are sponsored by 16 different churches, including St. Martin's, where we are today. And we have three parts to our mission. The first is our Dementia Day program, which um, is operating five days a week, Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 6. And it's designed exclusively for those um, adults who have dementia in the mild to moderate range. Last year, we served um, about 179 adults, and they ranged in age from 50 to 100. They were half male, half female, and they came from 53 different zip codes around the city, so we pull from quite far away. We also offer a broad array of caregiver supportive services for family caregivers, educational programs, resources, caregiver support groups, counseling, um, and then social opportunities. So we uh, served over 750 family caregivers last year. And finally, we offer what we do today, community education, sharing our experience um, and passion um, in the community on brain health and dementia. And last year, we served almost 2,000 in the community education realm. So it is a joy and pleasure to be here with you today. Um, we look forward to presenting using the arts to enrich the lives of those with dementia. But we have another message, and we hope all of us, as we age well, will understand how the arts can enhance our aging process. Life is a great big canvas, and you should 
throw all the paint you can on it. Danny Kay said that, and we clearly love this as we're all wearing it today. Um, it's just, it's just so exciting to think about how we embrace our lives and what we do with it. Um, so we left our professional clothes at home. We usually are in business attire and decided that we would have a lot of fun. Today, we are going to offer an experiential uh, presentation, so you will all be a part of it. And before I go further, I would like to introduce our fabulous team um, from Amazing Place, who's part of it today. In order of appearance, Susie LaForge, who has a dual role as our marketing director, and also um, she is the one who really started our art program. And you'll see so many of her gifts today. Next is Chef Michael, Michael Lieb, our culinary director, who um, really brings food to life every day at Amazing Place. And has really helped us fully implement the memory preservation nutrition program we started four years ago. Uh, Meal Unverzat, participant program director for over 12 years at Amazing Place. He has taken this program from a small group of 20 to now over 60 per day, and we are offering um, about 30 programs a day. And last but not least, Susan Giles, who's our community and church liaison, but she also brings so many other talents um, to the table. She is a beautiful singer, and she also has a very deep faith, and she holds us all up um, in our work, and we are very grateful for that. So I mentioned experiential. Each of you has a bag. And I think you were told not to go through it when he, they handed it off. So our presenters will guide you through. They'll tell you what to take out when um, and help you get to the right materials. We also have two fabulous volunteers. Where are Carol and Duran? There they are in the back. Carol Postal and Duran Blanke, who have worked very hard to help bring this to life and these bags to life. So thank you for, um, for being here. So our agenda today, we're going to talk a little bit about creativity in the arts and then how we use the arts at Amazing Place. We'll share the benefits of the arts and then we'll finish today with some resources. Yeah. So <clears throat> these are some photos of our day program, our Dementia Day program. And really it's what we do in our day program with the arts is the reason we felt like we could share this with you. Um, we're the only day program in Houston designed exclusively for those in the mild to moderate stage. And res research has shown consistently the importance of structure, stimulation, and socialization for those with dementia. We're open Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 6. And the arts is really only one part of what we offer. Um, you'll see some other things. Upper left are um, a couple of our folks in the chapel doing Bible study, which we do every day. Uh, upper right are two of our folks working on one of the smart boards doing a cognitive program. We do a lot of, of different cognitive activities. Um, we have discussions and presentations on history, science, the news. Um, the middle is one of our exercise classes, and we offer three per day. They're a very important part of our program. We go from active to passive all day long, keep people moving. It's very important as we age. Lower left is a bridge group. Socialization is a key element, as I mentioned before. And um, bottom right is, is Leonard enjoying art class. To live a creative life, we must lose our fear of being wrong. Isn't that, I love that. Joseph Perch said that. Um, when you talk about the arts, invariably the conversation turns to creativity. So how many of you all think you're creative? I know I do. Okay. The Artist's Way. Has anyone heard of The Artist's Way? It was a book it was written 25 years ago by Julia Cameron. And she um, argues that we are all creative. Um, in some way, some of us have been encouraged, others have been stifled, but the creativity is really a gift from God, and we all have it, we just have to find it. Um, it's like healing old wounds, digging deep and finding that creativity. So this is a 12-week course, and it is designed to unlock your creativity, which is not something we have time to do today. However, one of the most impactful exercises is one where you go back 
to when you were seven or eight years old and you think about what you were doing at that age. Who were you playing with? What were you playing with? Where were you? What brought you the most joy at that time in your life? And when you think about that, it kind of brings you back to that point in time before someone had said, you can't do this. You know, you still had the opportunity to try and explore things. And I know um, for me, it was drawing homes. I just love going in people's homes. And I started with the basic house with the four windows and the door in the middle. And it was just something I loved doing. And as I visited more homes, I would add a wing here and a wing there. And it was just lots of fun. But it helps us as you think back to that time in your life, it'll help you identify where your creative heart lies. So today, we are going to talk about four of the arts, the visual, the culinary, the literary, and the performing. Engaging in the arts has shown benefits clearly for people with dementia and really for all of us as we age. Um, as we go through what we do at Amazing Place, think about your own life and think about the impact um, that the arts may have as you go um, through your aging process. Before I go any further, I really need to thank Dr. Gustavo Roman, who is a wonderful friend of the organization. He is at the Nance National Alzheimer's Center at Houston Methodist, and he's also a member of our advisory council. And we are very blessed to work with a lot of wonderful medical professionals um, in Houston who guide us. And Dr. Roman just has a particularly passionate approach to the arts and how they impact those with dementia. So you will see him on some of our video clips today and we're grateful. Busy doctor took the time and thank you, Rebecca, for bringing him um, to do that with us. So why the arts? Ann Basting, who's a gerontologist and founder of the Time Slips program, said the arts are the cultural cure for dementia. Now, we know there is no cure for dementia, but to think about the impact of culture um, on dementia is really wonderful. The arts capitalize on the assets that remain. Dementia starts to diminish parts of our brain, and oftentimes that creativity remains. And so people who may not have been creative in their lives might begin to explore it, and we see that all the time. We're going to share a little bit about what we have witnessed at Amazing Place, and there are a multitude of research studies that um, validate the importance of the arts, but I wanted to mention two today. Um, the Creativity and Aging Study by the National Endowment of the Arts um, studied a group, and after only a year, the health of those 65 plus who participated in an intensive arts program that included painting, creative writing, pottery, jewelry making, and singing, and they also attended art exhibits and concerts, improved compared to the control group. This group used less medication, they were less inclined to fall, and had fewer doctor visits. Dr. Cohen, who directed the study, um, believes creativity really challenges the mind and results in new dendrites in the brain. The Journal of Aging and Many Mental Health did a review of 17 different studies related to the literary, performing, and visual arts um, for those with dementia, and it showed a positive impact on cognition, attention, memories, communication, and engagement. So clearly there are many, many benefits um, to the arts. So I'm going to go through just a few of these. Um, accessing different parts of the brain. We talked a little bit about the diminishing on one side and maybe the right side, the creativity remains. The lowering of inhibitions. Oftentimes people who may have been afraid to try something in the arts, um, their inhibitions diminish and they're willing to give it a try. It's a great lesson for all of us. And then you'll see over and over again how it taps deep emotions and memories. The social connection, it affords us the opportunity to connect with others. It enhances communication. And it offers a sense of accomplishment as you complete one of these um, arts projects. 
focus and attention, the flow that comes with um, many creative arts projects. In this multitasking world in which we all live, the ability to really focus on one thing is so good for the brain. It enhances cognition. Learning new tasks, following directions can really enhance um, the cognition in someone and, and really reawaken their um, cognitive skills. Increasing the happiness hormones, the dopamine, um, you'll see the, that through pictures over and over again today. And so now I will turn it over to Susie LaForge, who will bring you the visual arts. Thank you. Good morning. Um, before I begin, I just wanted to refer briefly to the book Tracy mentioned, The Artist Way. Um, Thirteen years ago, I um, had picked up a paintbrush in school, and I was looking for some more creativity and play and meaning in my life, and discovered this book and did the course with a friend, the 12-week course, and I started taking painting classes and painting prolifically, and then um, started volunteering at Amazing Place about six years ago and saw an opportunity to start a painting program there. And today I'm talking to you all about visual arts, something I never would have dreamed of 13 years ago. But I think the moral is that um, a, this book can change your life and art can change your life. And I firmly believe that we each have, as the book says, a creative spirit within us. And it's up to us to find, discover that, whether we have dementia or not. So today, before I share what we're going to do, uh, what we do with our participants at Amazing Place, I'm going to let you find a little of your creative spirit. And you're going to get to open your bag now. And you'll see a Ziploc that says vision, visual art. And if you'll pull that out. <clears throat> and you should see, open the bag, and you should have a pencil and a little mini canvas and e easel and um, three markers. Now, obviously, it would be much better if we had real paint to work with and a bigger canvas, but that was not really feasible for this class. So um, I'm going to take you through a mini art class. And this is one I've done in my own art classes. Um, it's one we've done with our participants a number of times. And it's one all of our presenters have done here today. So we can all say we've been there. Um, and you're going to create an abstract painting with your markers. So um, does everyone have their bag, their canvas ready, their markers out? And your pencil? Everybody ready? I don't want to rush you. OK, there's one rule for this. First, you're going to take your pencil, and you're going to draw. You have to hit every side of the canvas at least once. And Emil's going to demonstrate his version, but you all do your version. Um, and you can have squiggles, you can have lines, you can hit each side more than once if you want. So your first task is to start drawing. And when you finish drawing, just look at me so I know you're finished. OK, you almost done? OK. Now, at this point, some people can look at their canvas and the, and the design and see things in it. Um, a couple weeks ago, we did it with a participant, and he saw a horse's head. And he ended up creating that. You don't have to do that, but I'm just allow, giving you that opportunity. Um, because now you're going to take your markers and start filling in the blobs. Uh, fill in your blobs with the colors. And know that um, you can even be extra creative, like our executive director was, and discover that you can use white by not painting in a block. A block. OK, why don't we, um, if you would, just for a minute, what you've accomplished so far, just share with a neighbor. and. Um, Show show a neighbor what you've done and 
Okay. Look how unique each person, each person you will notice has a completely different abstract painting, which to me is a symbol of how we're each so unique. Um, tell me, anybody want to share what their feelings were doing this exercise? What? Calm and relax. Good. What? Uh, what did she say? You missed the music. You wanted music. Okay. Anyone else have, was anyone feeling a little stressed? Like uptight? Like, oh my God, is it going to turn out well? That's, that's real common. Does anyone, um, did anyone feel kind of free and it was fun? Okay. Well, that's a, um, if you get really brave, you can bring your little masterpiece home and finish it and put it on your desk and have it be a reminder of how you're each unique and you're each creative. So, um, so uh, what I'm going to show now is a very brief video. You're going to see an actual, or two actual art classes at Amazing Place. Um, and if you look closely, you'll see them working on an abstract, just like what you're working on. And another class where we were working on a pear and a nest, and then Dr. Rahman has a few thoughts he's going to share with us. All right, does everyone have a brush and some paint? As you go along, you may change where you put the light and the dark, and that's okay. You need to enhance the attention as a way to enhance the uh, memory. When you have uh, someone uh, just doing a sketch of, the, of an apple, well, you have to look at the apple and look at your drawing and try to find the exact curve of the apple and you are in a constant process of attention and everything disappears. At the same time, you are in a process of creativity. I look forward to it. I think we all look forward to our painting classes. Well, I am so new to painting that almost anything is a breakthrough. Uh. She's actually been painting for six years with us. Um, all those folks obviously have dementia, but you can see how engaged they are. So let me take you through um, what we do at Amazing Place and the benefits we've seen. We called our, when we initially started the program six years ago, we called it Everyone is an Artist with that whole philosophy that we didn't want to intimidate anyone. And it turned out I really didn't need to worry about that because those with dementia are not intimidated. They are judgy. They are freer. And as Tracy mentioned, they have less inhibitions. So right now we do about seven classes a week. Um, we have several different levels of acrylic painting classes. We do watercolor classes, mixed media, and collage classes. I'm going to show you just some of their compositions to give you an idea of what they can accomplish. And these were done with in two hour, two one hour classes at the most. 95% um, of the people who take our classes have never painted before. They are often investment bankers or doctors or nurses or housewives, and they are doing this for the first time. So take a look at what they can accomplish. That's a Cezanne and another Cezanne. <laughs> a, a pair and a nest an abstract that was done from memory. We, a lot, most of our classes, we show pictures and they paint from a picture. This one was an abstract from someone's, from Irene's head, and that's a, a Monet. This is a, cl a typical class. Uh, we do now more what's considered like paint nights. Have you ever been to a paint night where everyone paints the same composition? And they seem to enjoy that because they feel like we're teaching them all more together. Um, but what's so interesting is each one is different. Every composition is different. They each have their own style. And they are able to pick out who did which painting by their styles. 
This is another example of that. For our 20th anniversary, we had them paint doves because that is our logo. And you can see the differences between the styles and the looks of the doves. Um, we have a, col a collage of the paintings in our lobby if you want to see it in real life. And we also have note cards made of them. Here's some watercolors. And for those of you who know about watercolor, I don't do watercolor. It is not forgiving. In other words, if you make a mistake, it's very hard to fix. And I don't like that. So um, I don't do. So that is even more impressive to me to look at their watercolors. And then finally, this is an example of some of the collage uh, work they do. Um, and you can see Antoinette dressed appropriately for the composition. Um, we also do things, wild things, free things. We were getting ready to do some construction this past fall, and someone came up with the idea of, let's let them paint murals on the walls. And do you think they blinked an eye? No. They came up with ideas of what they wanted to paint on each wall and had a great time. Of course, now it got all knocked down, but they had fun while they were, the process was really important. We do the Meet Me at MoMA mod modules, which is a class specifically for those with dementia online, and may, some of you may have know, know about it, and it, it allows people with dementia to explore more in depth different artworks and ask them questions and um, that they can uh, address. And um, of course, we go on many community outings into the, into the art world. Um, in terms of the benefits now of what we've seen, and I have to say before I start that this class has gifted me with so much, and I've learned so much from them. But they also have received some benefits too, and I'll take you through all those. The first is obviously the social connection. And as I'm going through these, think about it also for yourself. If you were to do art, um, the, the benefit of that socialization, we all know that that's a critical factor as we age well. And an art class is a place where you can do something together with people, with or without music, and um, communicate and share what you've done and talk, talk amongst yourselves. So um, the art class provides a lot of that. The other thing it does is, um, Tracy mentioned the word flow and focus, and Dr. Rahman referred to it as well. Sometimes in our class, there, you can hear a pin drop. There's not a sound. And I have to always explain, if we have a volunteer coming in, that's a really good sign. What it means is they are so focused on what they're painting, they, they are not talking. And it's, it's the feeling, maybe some of you have had it if you write or if you're doing something iron or something where you're so focused on what you're doing. It's like mindfulness in that moment that there could be a fire down the hall and you wouldn't even blink. And that's what they're like. Um, we talked about accessing different parts of the brain and the freedom that they have with less inhibitions. Research has actually shown that those with frontal temporal dementia actually have even lower inhibitions and are more prolific and, in, and have more of a propensity to do art. But we've seen it across the board. And this is the lesson I think they can teach all of us, to have more freedom and not be so judgy about what we're doing. Accessing different sides of the brain. This is a man, Jeff, who had early onset Alzheimer's and had a lot of aphasia with it. At this point, he was in the moderate stage and could barely communicate. And he would come into art class, and we'd show him, we'd let him pick out his three paint colors. And he would go to town and do an abstract just out of his head. And then he'd know when he was finished. He, you know, I'd kind of encourage him to do something. No, nope, I'm done. And then he'd move on to the next one. And he would do maybe three or four in a class. And that was his way to communicate. It was also a way for him to feel like he was had some meaning in his life, some purpose. He was accomplishing something. So in he was a great demonstration of how parts of the brain can be shutting down. And that creative part that may have laid dormant for years can come alive and be tapped. Um, for those of you who are art history majors, you may have heard of de Kunig, William de Kunig, a famous abstract artist. And he is one of the few artists we know of that had Alzheimer's, and they can track, the, it's like a window into his brain, how his art changed after Alzheimer's. So that might be something you might want to look into. 
Oops. Art can also evoke memories and allow you to share memories. This is Huguette, who used to spend summers in the Laurentian Mountains in Montreal, and she decided she wanted to paint that memory. It was a wonderful memory of hers. And she painted that out of her head with no painting next to her, no picture, no photograph, and then was able to share the, the fun time she had uh, during those summers. Um, pride, we see this all the time, and it's a reason we do a lot of art exhibits for our folks. We do about one a year at our facility for their family and friends, and then we've done them all around town at different churches at Holly Hall, um, and it's an opportunity for them to showcase their work and to see the look of pride in their face. You can see that in Irene's face, and as their family and friends come to see their work. Um, we also hear stories all the time of family members fighting over their art and hiding them. And because when you think about it, it is a legacy they will have when this person's gone. And finally, can't forget the happiness hormone. And this, again, is a benefit for all of us. They have shown, research has shown that your dopamine, that is the thing that helps you if you are depressed, increases when you do art. And we are able to see this all the time, and I'm just gonna explain quickly this last exercise we did, because it, it to me, really illustrates so well the joy in this pro process. Um, I was inspired by George Bush, you know him, started painting in his retirement, and whatever you think about his art, but he had a book about a year ago, I think it was, on veterans, and he did portraits of veterans. And I started looking at his portraits, and I was like, our people can do that. So um, I made some copies of his style, and then we decided, well, let's do self-portraits. And, and people thought, oh, that's how are you going to do that? And so what we did was we took selfies of each person, and then we took, made two copies of it, one they could follow, and then one they could cut up and trace. So the first stage was cutting out their hair. The next stage, they cut around their scalp. So they, then you see a bald head. And then you cut across your eyes, so they place their eyes. And, and we were all tickled hysterically, because there were pieces of faces all over the table. And you could see what you could look like bald, for one thing, or without a nose. So the whole process was fun. It helped to make a great likeness, as you can see. And um, you can also see the joy and pride and sense of accomplishment she had on her pet, and that's Antoinette. And I'll show you a few more. This is Frank's. And you can see there's a resemblance there. Um, that's Jean with her, her turquoise glasses like mine. Uh, Sally, who claims she just started painting. <laughs> it's been painting a long time. <laughs> And that's Oscar. So um, with that, I just want to sum up very briefly, oops, sorry, that um, for those with dementia, we've seen the amazing benefits. And I think I've shown you some pictures that reflect that, of the joy, the social connection, the tapping into other parts of the brain, the sense of meaning and accomplishment when they have lost so much. Um, but um, also their willingness to try new things. And I think all of this is a lesson for all of us that we should not be afraid. And um, this morning, it just so happened, I get an art e-newsletter, and the subject line was, what have you got to lose? And I love that. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Michael to talk about culinary arts. Hi, my name is Chef Michael. Does everybody love food? Uh, many of you may be wondering how the culinary world fits into the arts program for our participants. We have a short film on how the arts work and interact with our participants at Amazing Place. Great to see everybody today. Uh, today we're going to do the farro salad. Love farro. 
Uh, the Germans call it spelt. In the morning time, you can mix it with yogurt and fruit. Uh, in the afternoon time, you can kind of make a salad like we're doing. Who wants to help stir the spelt? Food is becoming a, a very important component. One of the clinical keys that we find very often in patients who are beginning to develop memory problems is the loss of the sense of smell. So going back into that and reactivating the process is, is positive for the brain and uh, as one more of the push-ups for the brain that, that you can have. Also, there is a process of inflammation going on in the brain at the time when when these age-associated problems with memory begin to develop. By going, for instance, into the Mediterranean diet, uh, more extra virgin olive oil, balsamic vinegar, all these have an impact in the way we are fighting the process of, of inflammation. While she's helping me cook the spelts, we're going to cut the vegetables up. We got some uh, kalamati olives for our salt. We got some fresh basil, we got some yellow bell peppers, cucumbers. One of the easiest things we can do to take care of ourselves is put good fuel in our bodies. Yeah. And we're lucky here at Amazing Place because good food is the only thing they give us. As you can see, we strive to have the culinary arts make a positive effect on our participants with our meal service and programming. Uh, food is a very sensory uh, item, uh, invokes a lot of memories that you could have from your past and stuff like that. Uh, we strive to uh, have a great nutritious program uh, of food at Amazing Place. Uh, we use only fresh vegetables and fruits. Uh, all of our entree proteins uh, come to us fresh daily. Uh, we source uh, antibiotic-free and steroid-free meats. Um, this ensures that we have wholesomeness food that's going to uh, stimulate our participants' uh, senses. Uh, we have fresh aromas coming out of the oven. Uh, we bake all our stuff in-house, our desserts. Uh, all of them are sweetened with coconut sugar, which is very low on the glycemic index. Uh, all the flour that we use is 100% whole wheat, uh, fine grind uh, pastry flour. Um, so we basically eliminated all processed food uh, in our kitchen. Uh, we use no white sugar, no refined uh, flours, or refined flour. Um, there we go. Uh, one of the most important parts of serving our participants' lunch is presentation. We always make sure that everything looks very inviting. Uh, we actually have uh, kind of like a fiesta where we use brightly colored plates, bright tablecloths. Uh, we have fresh cut flowers on the table. Uh, we use little tricks to make sure we have a lot of height in our presentation. Uh, this will entice our participants. Uh, Everybody knows it's uh, your nose first that you sense food. Uh, you know, with your nose, we have the aromas coming out of the oven and the stovetop. Uh, then we have the presentation, very nice, a lot of height uh, to entice our uh, participants. Uh, the social connections are very important at lunchtime. Uh, food is the instrument that brings people together. Uh, these social connections and interactions are very important for the brain. You can see they're having a great time after lunch. You can always tell uh, lunch is very kind of boisterous and it gets very quiet when they eat. Uh, and then everybody's kind of excited afterwards. So they all start, you know, talking and reminiscing again. Uh, we serve fruit daily, so we have to uh, kind of pick, uh, we have to present it in different ways. Uh, they're either an appetizer, or it could be a dessert, it could be an afternoon snack. Uh, so we play with the presentation a lot. Um, we have both large and small cooking demos uh, with myself and the care team. Uh, we're making some empanadas here and some banana bread uh, in small groups. And then we also have large group uh, demos. Uh, you remember our dancers helping us stir the farro? Creating food in these classes brings com community pride and a sense of belonging, uh, and it opens up an opportunity to share food uh, and memories. 
with our participants. Uh, this is a great shot, July 4th, right? <laughs> Nobody else was going to touch that ball, I promise. Yeah. Uh, these are a lot of the ingredients in our cooking demo. Uh, we're going to get into our cooking demo now. Uh, I'm going to need three volunteers from the audience. Uh, do we have anybody that wants, we need a stir? Anybody? All right. Yeah, and you three? That'd be perfect. You guys are close to the aisle. Let's see. You want to have a seat in the chair. You're going to help us with herbs. Okay. If you really want. Okay. Well, as Michael sets up want. our volunteers, um, talk to you a little bit about um, a technique we use these. at Amazing Place when we're working with our participants. Um, yeah. I'll tell you what, Michael, if you'll just kill your mic for a second. Thank you. Um, uh, just uh, task analysis, basically uh, looking at their strengths, uh, what are they good at, and how can we let them utilize those strengths? Um, my mother-in-law lived with us for about five years, and oh, well, she was a homemaker. I mean, uh, she prepared every meal before then, uh, but dementia came along, and it, it was an option for her to start from the beginning and put a whole meal together. Um, so we'd have to find ways to, to get her to help out with meals, uh, be it Pulling herbs, uh, sprigs, green beans are a great, great little thing, snap beans, uh, setting the table. And you can see we, we have a, a volunteer in a chair here, so they don't even need to be mobile. You can just get them a seat, uh, get them uh, the tools they would need, and then let them go from there. And uh, based on their abilities, uh, dictates um, the uh, part of the, the meal that you would help them prepare. And uh, of course, if makes them feel much more attached, still be a part of the family, still be that provider, uh, but in a safe, uh, safe and supportive way. <laughs> so we're going to start by cooking our farro. Uh, farro is a lot like rice. Uh, when you cook it, uh, the Ratio is a little bit off. Uh, usually rice is one to two. This is more of one to 1.25. Uh, so if you have a cup of farro, uh, it's like two and a half cups of water. Uh, we got our water in there. Uh, farro uh, is basically the puffed wheat, the very top of it. Uh, it is a source of gluten, so if you're gluten ins insensitive, uh, you might want to try this recipe with like brown rice or a mixture of couscous and fer uh, couscous and quinoa. So we have our water going. Uh, we're going to add our farro to it. Uh, most farro comes from Italy. Different regions actually have different names for it. And this will be your spoon. And just make sure we don't boil over anything. Okay. And I'll give you a towel to make sure you don't burn yourself. All right. It takes a couple minutes to get that going. Uh, the other ingredients for our uh, salad, uh, we have fresh cut tomatoes, red onions, uh, parsley, red bell peppers, and cucumbers. Uh, and then we're going to garnish uh, with the olives and the cheese uh, and some of the other items. I'm going to move this a little bit. Uh, the farro is getting pretty fast. I'm going to grab this cantaloupe. Uh, those you can strip from the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. You're going to be the best smelling volunteer we got. Right? You doing okay on the olives? Awesome. Thank you very much for helping us, y'all. We encourage everybody to find tasks that everybody can do at home, keep everybody involved. Uh, our cantaloupe uh, is going to be both part of our uh, plate garnish and uh, part of our salad. Um, this is a great way to do cantaloupe, remove your two uh, bottoms so you have a nice flat surface to cut with. 
Try not to remove too much of your flesh. You don't have to use a great big knife, but it helps. This is a great light snack. It can be a side dish that you could serve with some grilled meats. Uh, like I was saying in the video, farro is a great item if you cook a little extra. Uh, you can always uh, cool it down, uh, use it in the morning uh, with fruit and yogurt. Uh, it's a great breakfast-like cereal. Um, you can also put it in uh, any kind of stir fries, like it goes very good with uh, Swiss chard or collard greens. Uh, and then you can put it in a lot of other little items, uh, soups. Uh, we actually thicken some of our uh, sauces with it, uh, with a blender. We don't use things like uh, flour and oil, a roux. So a lot of our soups and stuff we thicken with either rice or farro. I'm going to grab, there's a spoon here somewhere. Boom. Thank you, ma'am. Awesome. Now the farro goes pretty quick. Starts the water starts to evaporate and it starts to kind of come down into you can start to see the puffed rice. So if you just keep a little stir on that for me. Right now we got music in the kitchen almost always. Uh, we'll take a large spoon and cut out the seeds from our cantaloupe. Turn that all the way down. Uh, once the farro gets dry, uh, you can check it to make sure it's nice uh, and tender and it's going to be good to eat. Uh, usually this recipe, the two cups, you will probably do about uh, 15 minutes on the stovetop. And then uh, you can take it and remove it. Uh, and we're going to cool it. All right, that's about done. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. These are great little burners. You guys can find them at Asmart. They're great for camping or cooking outside or your, on your patio. Uh, we're going to go ahead and let this farro cool. Uh, so we're going to take it out of the pot, put it into a large container where it can cool, uh, nice and shallow. Uh, yeah. Now what you can help me with, uh, you can help me stir. Uh, we got one cucumber. Yeah. Uh, I got a clean spoon for you, I think. There you go. Yeah, you can keep it in there. Uh, one cucumber. A little bit of red bell pepper. The red onion. Tomato. Awesome, awesome. And then we're going to put the juice of one lemon in there and a little bit of cantaloupe. Awesome. You did a great job on the olives, ma'am. Yeah, you can put the cheese right on there for me. Just like any kitchen, it's tight fit, but we're all going to make it, right? Uh, we do have volunteers in the kitchen at MDP, uh, at Amazing Place. And we also uh, have a full-time employee. Uh, and the care team helps us. Uh, they serve as waiters and waitresses and help us uh, serve the participants daily. But uh, we are always looking for volunteers, so if anybody ever wants to come on down to Amazing Place, Susie Howard is the lady to talk to, and she can hook you up with a fun volunteer job that you just might learn something with. Uh, daily is 60. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, the staff... Uh, is usually in that number we can serve up to about 70 people right now if we have uh, a full house of 60 people plus staff uh, and we're working on becoming a little bit larger going up to 70 people so that will put about 80 people in the lunch crowd yeah i'm going to let you juice one of the lemons you ever use one of these little fun things there you go those are great. It takes all the guesswork out of the seeds and stuff. Wow. That was a big hit, huh? Awesome. Yeah. 
Let's see, we got the cheese all crumbled. Awesome job, my friend. Uh, it is feta cheese. All right. Yeah. I'll go ahead and give you a little bit of salt. Don't worry, I'm taking this one home, y'all. Right, a little bam there. A little white pepper and black pepper. We, a lot of times we use all three peppers in the kitchen, red, white, and black. It'll uh, layer the uh, flavors for you, uh, and it will actually work on stimulating each part of the tongue uh, with the flavor. So it's a lot more dynamic than just using black pepper or just using white pepper. So if you guys will use a little bit. You did an awesome job. Woohoo! Olives and cheese. We're going to go ahead and put our, most of our olives in our salad. All right. Now, we got herbs done for tomorrow. That's awesome. Uh, we're going to use the herbs and a little cooking process. She actually think I, I thought she would never get through all of them, but it looks like we pretty much got them. Awesome. Are you going to have any volunteer shifts next week that you're open to? Uh, now we're going to pretend like we're having a little light lunch. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh huh. But I do have a souvenir for you. Thank you for for volunteering. Appreciate it. There you go. Awesome. Oh, do now a lot of times uh, you can put the cheese in the salad. We choose to put the cheese on top. That way, if you have people uh, with uh, dietary restrictions, or the salad will last longer in your refrigerator. Uh, we put a minimum amount of oil on the recipe. Uh, if you're keeping it in the refrigerator, when you take it out, you can uh, sprinkle a little extra virgin olive oil on it. It will kind of perk things up, and you're not uh, having too many calories just sitting in there. Uh, as you see, this would be a great little light lunch. Uh, you got melon. You got farro. That's a great source of protein and carbohydrates. You got a lot of fresh vegetables and fruits. Uh, you got the Mediterranean olives in there that will give you, uh, there's a lot of research into uh, things in brines will actually help you uh, in the long run. Uh, you did an awesome job, ma'am. You can take off your gloves. I really appreciate it. Emil's got a t-shirt for you. You've done over what I even Thank imagine so our volunteer corps could do. Thank you very much. And as you can see, we can get things done, even if we're not going to use them today. Uh, maybe a family member at home can get something uh, done in the kitchen for you that you're going to use tomorrow, because there's always little, little jobs in the kitchen. There are uh, no small jobs in food service, just long remedial ones that take forever, right? Uh, you guys have been an awesome crowd. Uh, now, if you look into your bag, uh, you guys have already got the farro salad. Uh, we put a little bit of a uh, sweet aftertaste in there uh, for you guys. If you'll find, there's a ginger snap cookie. Uh, that cookie is made with 100% whole wheat flour and coconut sugar. Uh, so it's going to be low on your glycemic index. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoy the cookie and the salad. And that is going to bring us over to the literary arts and a meal. Thank you so much, Chef. Yeah, you may have noticed a uh, big batch of cookies up here. That's always uh, every participant's favorite part of the day is dessert. Can't compete with that. All right. Hopefully you had a chance to finish your, your farro and you'll get to uh, dip into that cookie because uh, I'm going to need you to take a sample of it for our next exercise. All right. Sorry, man. Too Again, close. my part is uh, the literary arts, so we're going to be doing a little bit of writing. Um, food is a, a great inspiration for writing. I'm going to show you just how easy it is to, to go ahead and do a writing exercise. Um, also inside your bag should be a, a little card uh, with a writing prompt on it. Homemade cookies remind me of. So take a, take a sniff, take a nibble, um, savor your cookie, and then... I want you to spend uh, two minutes straight just adding to that prompt. Homemade cookies remind me of. All right, we're approaching two minutes. Uh, would anybody be willing to, to share what they, they wrote? I got more t-shirts to give away. 
All right. Wonderful, wonderful. Mine's pretty easy. You're learning to cook with my grandmother. Oh, well, I'll take it. <laughs> here we go. And I had another volunteer up here. Mine's a little long. I'll read it. Mom's kitchen, very old stove. Oh, hold on one second. Home, homemade cookies remind me of Mom's kitchen, a very old stove that's sometimes too hot to touch. Love of family, old handwritten recipes, warmth, love, home, and childhood. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, yes, our other one here, homemade cookies remind me of learning to cook with my grandmother. Uh, when I was doing this exercise with participants, grandmas popped up a lot. How many have a grandma in their story? Handful of us? Yeah, yeah. Oh, fabulous, fabulous. Well, I, I just want to, again, wanted to give you that exercise. As uh, someone like myself, oh, I hated English class. Give me a C, let me get out of there. Um, never thought I'd ever take up writing. But uh, I sat in on some of the, the classes that we host at Amazing Place, and you find yourself getting into it. Little prompts like this can just get you started. Uh, it's a great um, exercise for different seasons. Uh, you know, take out a peppermint candy. Um, it doesn't have to just be food. It could be going out into the garden for inspiration. Uh, next, I'm gonna show you a video clip. My uh, segment has one as well. You'll get to see some of our participants uh, engaged in a writing class at Amazing Place. It was in Barcelona. I met my grandmother in there. You know, first time I see a grandmother. <laughs> and she was telling me, she was 95, and she was telling me, my granddaughter is coming. And I was telling, it's me, it's me. <laughs> I am your granddaughter. I am here, abuela. I am here. <laughs> and she embraced me. <laughs> so it was unforgettable. You know, on a spirit I will never forget. You know. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> yeah. 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 I have an ode to beautiful spring flowers, yellow, blue, orange, and red. Their beauty fills me with delight. My face forms a gentle smile, every color of the rainbow, speaking of the glory of creation. Here I, I can en engage uh, many lives that have had different experiences. I really enjoy hearing uh, other people's, what, what has moved them in their lives, and to engage life around you. It's a very valuable thing. Oh, isn't that just a beautiful sen sentiment? Engage life around you. Uh, if we do nothing at Amazing Place, we do that. I think we've succeeded. Uh, well, um, the, we have a variety of different uh, literary arts programs. Um, we do a different poetry writing exercises. I mentioned the garden earlier as inspiration. Uh, we may have a goal of writing a haiku, and so we'll go look for flowers and look at our koi pond for, for inspirations in nature, and then kind of turn it into a mental exercise, see if we can put the syllables together and come up with something uh, worthwhile. Uh, in the afternoon time, when everybody's maybe a little down, a little anxious about going home, we may, oh, get into a self-esteem uh, poetry exercise. Uh, where you take your name and for each each uh, letter of your name, you kind of come up with positive attributes and we all help each other find positive attributes about one another. Um, we have different author appreciation days. Um, for example, maybe Edgar Allan Poe's birthday, we, we delve into his life and some of his prose. Um, we often use it as a, a tool for, for reminiscence. Um, we've collaborated with Imprint Houston. Um, they send a, a professional uh, writer over and gives us these writing prompts, and then uh, participants uh, engage in the class. Um, we'll take time, we've done some biography type exercises, and then you've heard mention of a program called Time Slips, and I'll get into that a little bit more. Um, but uh, that's the uh, majority of the literary arts programs we, we perform. Uh, now the benefits. It's a, it's a wonderful reminiscence tool. Um, as just our little exercise showed, it's a great way to, oh, talk about grandma, uh, delve into that, that childhood home you used to visit and where you got that inspiration. So these, these stories just come out of, in, uh, come out of us um, whenever we, we write. And just take the time to uh, just put our thoughts down on paper. 
Uh, the literary arts are a wonderful uh, sharing and social connection. Um, mentioned the, the imprint class, and after they get their prompt and they write the stories, probably one of the most touching parts of the class is each per person uh, goes around and, and reads their story. And here you can see how focused everyone is and the smiles uh, when they hear something uh, about their friends and their, their friends' lives, and they're able to share that. Um, also, uh, dementia can take away um, your verbal skills. Um, but uh, if you still have the, the um, ability to write, it's great to just take your time, put your thoughts down. Uh, the sentences all not, aren't always perfect, but the thoughts come together and they serve as a, a, a guide. So they can share those stories a little bit easier. And uh, sharing those stories is so vital um, because then our, our team begins to learn those stories. And so when we introduce somebody to somebody else, they may not be able to tell their own story anymore, but we can kick it off. Say, oh, this is, he was an investment baker too. He used to vacation in Hawaii. And so we can help those stories live on, help continue those social connections. Another value in the literary arts is uh, pride and legacy. Here you see Sally, uh, you know, a great patron of our arts classes at Amazing Place. Well, um, at the end of the 10-week session of Inprint, those uh, stories are actually compiled into an anthology. And um, then the participants, much like our art classes, are, are honored. They're offered an opportunity to read those stories to their, to their peers or, or have them read. And, well, I'd just like to read one of you that, uh, read one to you that Sally wrote. And I think it really hits home as far as the importance of the literary arts. So uh, the inspiration for this one was you are giving instructions to a portrait artist on how you would like your portrait done. So Portrait of Sally by Sally. I would like my portrait to show me in a library with the background of a wall of books. I'm sitting at a table with a few books, one in my hand, the others in a small stack. I'll be reading, so put my glasses on. The books will be lighted by late afternoon sun coming through the window. All the background will be walls of books, different colors, some large, some small. The reflection on my face should show enjoyment and, if possible, deep thought. The book I'm holding in one hand should be fairly thick. If possible, show a clock in the background reflecting late afternoon and put a cat curled up on the shelf who looks as satisfied as I do. Oh, isn't that just beautiful? And uh, it would just be a shame not to uh, give Sally an opportunity to appreciate the literary arts. Got so many choices. All right. So uh, here's a, another poem. Uh, I'm sorry, not a poem, but a, a story written by one of our participants. And um, it goes to show that uh, by participating in these programs, emotions are able to come out. They're able to come out in a more clear way than if they were to just try to speak off the cuff. So this story goes, I really had the blues with my diagnosis of dementia. I've always had great pride in self, and the diagnosis is not congruent with the self-image I wanted to carry in life. However, I've become comfortable with it at Amazing Place. I am with other normal people, so I don't feel stigmatized here. I look around and feel as though I'm no more or less demented than the others, so I reject the diagnosis. With that said, I feel that Alzheimer's is just one of the many paths in life. I no longer feel diminished but just facing another phase in my life. So I say, let's get on with it. P.S. I still know to come out of the rain. So just uh, another benefit, I, I think I left the slide off, but it just popped in my head, is just um, the admiration caregivers can have for their, uh, the people they're caring for, to know that they are not just this feeble old person with memory disorder, but they've got this incredible vocabulary, they've got this rich life, and these wonderful stories to share. Uh, another benefit would be cognitive stimulation. Uh, we invite uh, guest speakers to come in. This is a, pro a professional poet, Rashonda Johnson, and she was reading some of her original works. And on subjects, you know, love, life, uh, caring. And you could just see our uh, participants connecting with their stories and laughing along at the, the happy times and feeling sad in the emotional stories. And so just kind of getting inside of ourselves. I mentioned the time slips, and um, this is an award-winning program. Um, and what it is, is the inspiration for the stories comes from uh, images 
I don't know if you can make it out, the sword fighters up at the top there. So there may be a sword fighter there, or it might be a panda bear eating an ice cream cone. Uh, whatever the uh, image is, the, the group, of, a small group of eight to ten gets together, and the facilitator guides them in questions. For example, oh, when do you think this is taking place? Oh, uh, what time period is this? What do we want to call this person? And by working together, um, they generate a story. There's no wrong answers, so you know you don't have to have uh, as many cognitive skills to participate in this program. But uh, having greater cognitive skills doesn't diminish your appreciation for it. All of our participants have uh, taken part and enjoyed this class. And um, this is uh, the lady up there. Actually, she's in both. Uh, her name's Lori Lambitz. She's a, a professor at the Honors College at the University of Houston. All of her students are in the medical field of some form or fashion. And uh, she stresses the importance of non-pharmacological treatments for dementia. So, um, you know, how much more valuable is it uh, to have somebody telling stories, laughing with others, as opposed to, to just being medicated and not being bothersome? And so that, that's a big focus of her class. And so she educates her students in this Time Slips program. And then they go out around town and facilitate the class. And in conclusion, uh, I'll share with you some quotes from our, our participants over the, the years, uh, specifically regarding our arts program. But we share our most intimate thoughts in a non-judgmental and supportive place that allows us to learn about each other more. Uh, from Ron, Linda says, this class allows us to be ourselves and share with others. Bob says, it helps us dig up our deepest emotions. And Sally says, it's always good to get inside yourself and see what's there. So I encourage you, take a writing prompt, put a little pen to paper, see what comes out, get inside of yourself and see what's there. Thank you. Gonna take a sentimental journey. Gonna set my heart at ease. I'm gonna take a sentimental journey to renew old memories. Got my bag, I got my information. I spent each dime I could afford. Like a child in wild anticipation, long to hear that all aboard. Sentimental journey, sentimental journey. You all, sentimental journeys definitely help us renew old memories. And I have the great joy and the passion, actually, to share with you about the performing arts and absolutely the life they bring, the joy they bring, and the richness they bring to our lives. But first of all, we're really going to emphasize music. And I'll tell you that music, just like Sentimental Journey just said, not only renews old memories, it can renew some recent ones too. Like if you like rock or if you like hip hop, heck, you can have new memories too with music. But it's a wonderful thing for what it does for our beautiful brains. Now, I want you to see here Doris Day. How many of you all were even born when Doris Day was singing? Look, all right, all right. Well, there she is in her glory days, and she's got her special mic, the mic of the days of yore. And I want you all just for a second with me, would you all mind please standing up? And I would like us to sing this song together. And if you don't know it, hey, that's all right. We're just going to sing it twice, that little verse, and here we go. And you know what? If you were born during that time, if you can start kind of thinking of maybe some memories or maybe an emotion or two or just something that went on during the sentimental journey days. All right, let's go. Gonna take a sentimental journey, gonna set my heart at ease, gonna make a sentimental journey to renew old memories. Do it again. Gonna take a sentimental journey, gonna set my heart at ease. 
Gonna make a sentimental journey to renew old memories. Well, you all can sit down. I'm sure you were just flooded with memories from 1944, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> or at least memories, or at least memories of Doris Day. But I'm just curious, did anybody have a recollection? I know it won't be the same as a sugar cookie aroma, but did anybody have a recollection, perhaps? You do? Well, tell me what it is. Yes, it's true. Absolutely, Judy. They were quite a team, weren't they? They were America's sweethearts in many ways. Beautiful. Anybody else? Yes. Kesara. We actually have it on a playlist for you. I think we've got that written out as a possible song. If not, I'm glad you remembered it. Yes, Kesara was one of her famous. Yes, Rebecca. I love it. So it made the dishes a lot more fun, didn't it? Absolutely. But hey, yes. Uh, well, how much fun. That is so true. All the things we had then were so cumbersome and big, but gosh, they were fun, weren't they? Well, you all, I remember I had the feistiest, most wonderful maternal grandfather, and he was known for music. We had a big old piano in the house, and we all lived on the same street here in Houston, so all the family would gather together, and Gramps would just go to town playing Sentimental Journey and everything else, and I just remember I adored him, and oh, did I love the music coming out of him. So that's a beautiful memory there. Well, you all... We're going to look at a video in a minute of our participants, and let me tell you something. This was not rehearsed a bit. I literally walked in the room. I was kind of surprised myself. I walked in. Now, we're terribly off key, but we just started singing uh, Sentimental Journey, and it was kind of fun to watch them. One person just said, oh, Doris Day. Another person said, oh, my goodness, that makes me happy. And another man got real quiet. And I was wondering, uh-oh, is he not enjoying himself? He said, I feel real romantic. <laughs> so that made him, that was during a time when lots of romance was going on with Doris Day and Rock Hudson, wasn't it? So we're going to leap over to this video in a minute. You're going to see our participants. You're also going to see a participant named Sidney, who's just adorable, and music just pours out of him. He loves to play piano. You're going to hear from Dr. Roman again, talking about how many of us who hated taking music lessons or had to practice for an hour, how actually that was huge benefit to our brain, whether we knew it or not, and that we need to still keep using our musical skills or play an instrument or take up one as we move along. So let's have fun looking at this video. And again, forgive us that the participants and I were off key, but we sure did have a good time. I got my bag, I got my reservation. It's hard to tell where, where it all began in my life because it's just been a part of my life growing up. I just always uh, was musically inclined and, and loved to sing. Many of my patients are in the age group where they were forced to take one hour piano lessons when they were little. When I give them a prescription to put on the refrigerator to play one hour piano every day, I say, but what it's going to sound awful. I mean, I haven't practiced for 35 years. Say, well, that's not the point. Rhythm is something that is deeply ingrained in all of us. And it's amazing to see how the brain is activated. Does it make you move more? Mm -hmm. I noticed you were moving a little bit. <laughs> we haven't even sung the song and you're already remembered. We're getting in the groove. You're getting in the groove. Well, does that song kind of have a syncopated rhythm? Yes. Is it? Gonna take 
Whatever you a say. sentimental journey. Look at you. You want to stand up and dance? Uh -huh. <laughs> Young girl. Do you see the joy? It's just joy. Music brings such joy. Well, right here, I wanted to show you the most adorable photo. This is Foster in the purple. He loves Zydeco music, and he's just belting it out, isn't he? And with him is Albert playing on the piano. This gentleman is has dementia, but is one of the most talented musicians. He was a Tejano musician and a jazz musician, and it just flows out of him. And then the gentleman in the blue shirt is Jerry, who's a marathon runner, who just happens to love to spontaneously dance and loves Zydeco. Zydeco, so they were all three having more fun. We just couldn't bear it. And we're so glad to have that photograph of them having fun. So you can see what happens with music. It can bring social connection and joy. And when people have dementia, they get so isolated. And we, even when we're caring for someone with dementia, get so isolated. So it's so important to get connected again, and music certainly makes that happen. You all, at Amazing Place, we have a range of people we're serving from age 50 all the way up to 100. Now think about the challenge that is for picking the kinds of music that's exciting or fun or relevant to somebody. So we try to do a myriad different sing-alongs. That brings joy to people. We do name that tune. We play music from the big band era, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. Emile's told me that a lot of our participants now really love music from the Vietnam War era. In other words, we're not doing the big band as much as a lot of more, a little more current things. We listen also for the more highbrow, Bach and Beethoven. In general, we just have a ball. Now, what you can do for your loved one, of course, is create a playlist of songs that were real relevant or were meaningful to them or even from the era they enjoy, and it makes the journey of dementia a little softer, a little easier, and just something where there's lots of joy that's infused because you know what you're going to watch? When they listen to their music, frequently what happens, they are renewed to themselves. Does that make sense? Gosh, I started dancing and I really did the other night. We had a full moon after working on this presentation. I got so excited that I went outside by myself. My dogs weren't with me or they would have been howling. And I just started singing and dancing under the moon because talking even about this brings out creativity and joy. And it renewed me to a young girl who loved to dance. So I want you to see the next slide. We love to marry music and dance and exercise. Emil also taught me a brand new word, well, at least a new concept that I didn't realize we were doing at Amazing Place. He kept saying, music is an enhancer. It's an enhancer. Well, it enhances a lot of the things that we do all throughout the day. And here you're watching a Zumba class. It's an exercise class. And of course, I don't know about y'all, I love Latino rhythms, lived in Brazil. And if I start hearing that or hear some wonderful drum beat, I go wild. But our participants do too. And look at them. And Jose is from Bolivia. So he's making it extra fun. So when you see what's happening there, the brain is getting so stimulated because there's bright colors, there's movement, there's Zumba music, and a exercise for the body. By the way, Zumba, and Dr. Roman says this all the time, it makes the brain more nimble. And the magic brain exerciser is what? It's music. When we have cycling class, we enhance it with bubblegum oldies and Motown music. When we have lunchtime, we sometimes play oldies or soothing jazz, or sometimes it's songs like Get a Job from the 50s that I love, and I can't even eat comfortably because I'm wanting to dance under the table. And at the end of the day, during our stretch and relax class, we play spa music. Now look here. These are called Lumi sticks or rhythm sticks. Have you all heard of these? They're so much fun. All it is is just two little simple sticks. This darling little girl had come with the teacher that day. And literally, you take the Lumi sticks and play some rocking good fun songs and click those sticks, and it starts enhancing rhythm in a person. It's really, really fun to watch that, too, because uh, they're getting exercise. 
they're hearing music and they're getting the uh, everything's been enhanced by the loomy sticks or the rhythm sticks so we all need to keep rhythm in our life even if we feel we have two left feet now you all this is our amazing place choir and I want you to see such a benefit of emotional well-being and pride actually in being able to be purposeful you know a lot of folks with dementia begin feeling like I I don't even know why I'm around they, they feel sometimes have a hard time feeling purposeful well here they're gathered together sharing their talents being focused attentive listening to ways that they can share their music it benefits people so deeply and our choir looks so forward to performing and you know what we can't wait for this Christmas season time because they're going to be doing something fun and wonderful now Terry Miller with the Alzheimer's Association they're going to be having another choir starting up it's a chorus a fun memory chorus and we have it on some printouts for you all but it's going to be starting up next year you just call the Alzheimer's Association here in Houston and it's for caregivers plus the person with dementia and there's volunteers and it's a joyful mini week chorus and brings lots of joy to everybody so there is lots of fun do you all want to know a fascinating side benefit of singing in a choir I thought this was fascinating people who have been widowed men and women really benefit from being in a choir and it's because again feeling isolated a lot of grief inner grief they might be out with people but they're feeling an inner grief and I'll tell you a choir reconnects so again it's purposeful it's emotional good well-being and it's just a wonderful way to stay connected now you all I can't say enough about this by the way the woman at the bottom there Joan looks a little somber but boy howdy she certainly plays beautiful music she used to play with a wonderful church here in Houston and when she came to amazing place her gift of music literally talk about enhanced it enhanced everything and what you see up there are, are, are some of our participants in Bible study in the chapel and I'll tell you something I've never seen anything like it when we're in chapel time folks that did not even remember what they just had for lunch this makes me want to cry they will remember all their verses they will remember hymns they'll start singing with with gusto and a beauty and a recollection that is very touching and it ministers to any of us that are teaching or are helping in Bible there's nothing more sacred than watching that or experiencing that Ephesians 519 says we are to sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among ourselves and make music to the Lord with our hearts well that's exactly what happens when you engage your loved ones sometimes in the old hymns or even ask or start talking about Bible verses with them Exodus 15 2 says the Lord is my strength and my song so he's giving them strength and he's giving them song I hope you all this is very comforting to you it was extremely comforting to me to see my dad a West Point man with Alzheimer's who couldn't remember from moment to moment grab our hands in prayer and say prayers with such depth and beauty and then the next moment didn't know where he was so I want you to be comforted greatly that even though we're forgetting our God does not forget us ever when we have dementia some people end up having aphasia or the loss of words so I thought this slide we on our team thought this slide was very helpful where words fail music speaks doesn't it it's a universal language now you all this just tickles me no end do you see the joy and exuberance there well I want to tell you something having fun and being playful is not just for children research has shown that being light-hearted can have significant benefits on our physical and mental well-being dancing just brings out the joy and is helping our brains and body be fit no matter what 
whether we're just as we're aging or if we have dementia. Look at Janet here. She just would spontaneously jump up anytime we asked her to dance. She was just up and making it happen. And I wanted to show you something. One of my dear friends, who is a wife of one of our participants, gave me a mug. Now, you can't read it from here, but she gave this to me because as she watched her husband with dementia and Lou Gehrig's disease, as he was having his journey, she gave me a mug that says, life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning how to dance in the rain. Well, I think many of our participants and those of you who are caring for folks with dementia, they're in a mind storm, a, f a form of a mind storm. But you know what we want to do for all of them is help them to be able to dance in the rain. And look here what Janet's doing. I just love that experience, experience of uh, watching her play and have fun. And look here, speaking of spontaneity, look at the benefit of joy and social connection. The gentleman you saw earlier in art class that had no words, well, he sure had some feet. So he got up and he started dancing. And we have learned very much that folks with lowered inhibitions can be invited to dance. I mean, people that you would think would be just all buttoned up and would say, no way, Jose. Well, they're wanting to stand up and dance. So it gives us joy. Look at Joan and look at them. They're just making it happen. It's so cute. So they'll get up and accept an invitation to dance. By the way, that's something very wonderful to do. Offer your hand when music's playing. Invite them in. What a joyous way to socialize. It's a great benefit and to get in touch with the younger, more carefree parts of ourselves, right? Now here, this is very touching because one of the benefits of dance, of course, is the emotions that it provokes and feeling connected. This particular participant and his wife were very, very, very much in love and they were so devoted to each other and so she came to visit him at Amazing Place and you can see when they started just dancing there was such emotional closeness and connection. Some individuals with dementia, as you all know, have trouble sometimes feeling empathy. They start losing aspects of empathy and they're sometimes not even aware who's around them or who's caring for them. And the beauty of dance, or inviting someone to dance, it brings people close together again as a couple, or as friends, or as caregiver. And you can feel a tender and beautiful benefit from that. Now from that quiet, sweet dancing, now we've got something mighty colorful. We have a staff member, as I told you, that is pure Bolivian. He adores sharing his music, his food, and his dance. And these are his friends from Bolivia that came and they brought all the stimulation to everybody's brains. It's really fun to learn about other cultures and their music and dance and all. So there was vivid color, rhythms, music, and dance. And you can see one of the Bolivian artists, she just asked Maria to dance and look there. She just stood up and started moving. It was so cute. So I want to just emphasize something here we all do. Let's just say it together. You don't stop dancing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop dancing. Now we don't want to do that, do we? We want to dance every dance. Now, we emphasize performances, people that do the performing arts at Amazing Place, and we had these darling children from Uganda came all the way across the waters to come and perform in America, and we had the privilege of having them come to us. They were the most amazing children, and they shared their stories, their trauma, and the redemption of their trauma, uh, it was beautiful and highly inspiring, and their music and dance was just mesmerizing. So it was very uplifting to see children who had been at the bottom receiving so much uh, from God to make their lives different. Well, look here. Look at the emotions that the performing arts or these particular children. This one woman up here is crying. She couldn't stop crying. Many of them were crying, actually. Uh, I love seeing Eleanor there embracing that little girl. 
and Gloria there just full on had to kiss that child. Who wouldn't either? So there was an outpouring of so many emotions, and I will never forget that. It was beautiful. Now, our wonderful Susie LaForge, who did all the beautiful visuals for this presentation, uh, arranged to have this opera singer come. And this gentleman is a counter tenor, so he had a very, very, very high voice, almost like a woman's voice, and yet it was stunning. And he told everybody about it. He told everybody about a lot of history in, in opera, and particularly with that type of voice. And uh, it caused our participants, the benefit was tremendous rapt attention. They were very focused. They were delighted in this gentleman's talents. And guess what? There was a rousing bravissimo when it was all said and done. Now here we have some musicians that paired being able to show visuals. So here's Louis Armstrong's It's a Wonderful World. They played music. They enthralled our folks with different textures of music, and it was beautiful. And by the way, Doran, one of our wonderful volunteers that served you Pharaoh salad up there, Doran, is, well, I don't see her in the room. Her husband's in this band. It's called the Gray Fox Band. They just tickle us to pieces. And uh, they come in, and it's almost like they have kind of a ZZ Top look, but they are just the sweet. They, are, they do all kinds of other types of music. They're just fabulous and fun, and they perform songs that are more folk, country, and bluegrass that have those elements in it, and their performances invite our participants to effortlessly reminisce. Now you all, can you bear it? Look at those darling children, disciplined and talented, and they came and shared with us, and there's nothing more powerful than intergenerational gifts for people with dementia. They love to be around the joy of little children, but these little children were amazing. They were like little adults. They were so talented and, and disciplined, but it means so much to hear them, and every one of our participants wanted to embrace them and take them home. It was kind of cute. You all, before though I'm about to finish, I just wanted to let you know that we did have a drama club in the sense a true formal club at Amazing Place, but now we put on a lot of skits and things with our participants in costume and some of our staff in costume, and it allows people to be very creative in their mind and engage in the performing arts. Does that make sense? It's a lot of fun for them, and they have fun, and sometimes we'll put them on our culture bus and take them, we've taken them to opera in the Heights. So you all, I want to just say in conclusion, I want you to please remember that anything that we have emphasized in this presentation, we're suggesting that this is important for all of us, right? I know this, it provoked me to want to start listening to more music and dance just by even giving the presentation. But we want to impart to you all that you just go and play and dance and sing whatever you can do. And so let's remember this before I sit down. I want you to sing like no one's listening, love like you've never been hurt, dance like nobody's watching, and live like heaven on earth. And now our wonderful Tracy, who was inspired to even have this presentation. We're so glad Tracy's coming back up. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susan, Emil, Susie, and Michael. Y'all did a fabulous job bringing the arts to life, and we greatly appreciate it. I just wanted to run through quickly the benefits one more time that we emphasize today accessing different parts of the brain, the lowering of inhibitions. We saw over and over the tapping deep emotions and memories, the social connections, we felt it here, the enhancing of communication, the sense of accomplishment, that flow, that focusing of attention, the enhanced cognition, 
and the increasing of the happiness hormones, we all saw that. So once again, just the benefits, not only for those with dementia, but for all of us as we age. <clears throat> Some final thoughts from Brene Brown's book, The Gifts of Imperfection. There's no such thing as creative people and non-creative people. There are only people who use their creativity and those who don't. The only unique contribution that we will ever make in this world will be born of our creativity. And if we want to make meaning, we need to make art. Cook, write, draw, doodle, paint, scrapbook, take pictures, collage, knit, rebuild an engine, sculpt, dance, decorate, act, sing. As long as we're creating, we're cultivating meaning. So in your um, bags, you will also notice a few other things. Um, there's a playlist, a, a list of suggested songs for a playlist. There is our arts resource. It's a little flyer, and it has resources for all of the four arts. Um, things for folks as you age well, and there are a few specific items on there for people with dementia. And then finally, one of our art cards, and you saw over and over the importance of connection to others. So take that art card and, and jot a note to someone you haven't been in touch with in a long time. Um, I think it's so important to cultivate those connections with old friends. Thank you all so much for being here today and for listening to all of us. And we just appreciate your time and attention so much. Thanks. All right, thank you all. Yeah. <laughs>